Good day, everyone. What I have here is HRBE 24-volt uh, uh, lithium-iron phosphate uh, battery that I picked up from my solar shed. And in today's video, we're going to do the capacity test on this. If you're interested, stay tuned. First thing to do is charge it to 29.2 volts uh, using my bench power supply and the reason I'm using 29.2 volts that's what the manufacturer suggests uh, that's from the instructions for uh, 24 volt uh, 29.2 that gives us uh, 3.65 volts per cell I did the math a little earlier there uh, so uh, we're gonna let that charge and while that's charging I'm actually gonna uh, grab my other phone and then I uh, download this app and uh, see what the app looks like Got the app going on my old phone, had to download it from their website. They just give you a little link to scan in. You download that. It's a pretty uh, plain app. It doesn't uh, seem to show individual cell voltages, just shows the average voltage right there. I figured it was going to take a long time to just charge at 5 amps. So what I had to do is uh, whip out this uh, old school uh, charger that I built a long time ago. It's a 12 volt uh, uh, power supply that has a step up uh, converter. Uh, that does constant constant voltage uh, and constant current. I set it for uh, 40, uh, 29.2 uh, volts and uh, 10 amps on the output, and that connects to there also. So 10 amps coming from uh, this old school charger, and uh, 5 amps coming from here. So total 15 amps going inside the battery. Should charge up in about uh, said like three some hours there. So once I charge up, we'll uh, we'll do the discharge. Just wanted to give you a quick update. We're towards the top of the charge and uh, uh, over voltage protection kicked in. Uh, average cell voltage is 3.49, but over voltage protection uh, kicked on. Balancing is on. So some of these uh, cell groups must be out of uh, balance. So they are reaching to the top uh, uh, protection level. So the over voltage protection comes on and the balancing is working. So I've seen this uh, kick on and off. I don't know if we'll do it right now while I'm on the video or not. Uh, once the balancing bring in, brings that uh, one of the cell groups down, it actually starts charging again. Total pack voltage is uh, 27.91. But as you can see, it's not taking any charge. We're sitting at 29.2. But uh, eventually this will, uh, the over voltage protection comes off uh, and then uh, the charging restarts. I'm going to keep this uh, on for a while so it actually balances all the, uh, the cells in there uh, so i'll let this uh, uh, do its thing until it balances it out and then, and then i'll give you an update i did disconnect uh, the other uh, charger just because it, you don't need it anymore anyways i'll give you an update once that's all balanced out so idea is uh, this voltage should match that voltage and the, all the cell groups should be sitting at that 3.65 volts so i'll let it uh, run and do its thing and then i'll give you an update Wanted to do a quick update. I found a better app uh, that uh, works with this BMS. It's actually called the uh, Overkill Solar. And uh, this actually shows a lot more information than uh, the uh, app uh, that manufacturer gives you. And also allows you to change settings of the BMS, which is pretty cool. But uh, yeah, my suspicion was right. As uh, you can see, this uh, shows the individual cells. And uh, the high cell is at uh, 3.75. And the low one is at 3.46. You see right now it's tripped because over voltage set it for 3.75. So it stops the charge. And uh, But it's uh, kind of balancing. Uh, we can see total volt, uh, uh, pack voltage of the pack uh, coming up a little bit. It's probably going to take a day or two to get balanced out because balancing is super slow on this BMS. Uh, but it is working. It does allow you to change settings if you want to. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm going to let this... Uh, balance probably for a day or two until it's uh, uh, completely balanced and uh, uh, the voltage charge voltage matches and then uh, the cell voltages are more or less uh, close to be the same uh, before we do the discharge test it's unfortunate that it came out of balance like this but uh, we will uh, make it work i'll give you an update all right i believe it's like uh, two and a half days later uh, but uh, we are looking a lot better than we did uh, we're able to fully charge the battery. The delta is uh, small. It's uh, 0 0.042 of the volts, so it's uh, fairly close to each other. It could be uh, closer, but I think we are good enough uh, for us to start the test. So I have the battery hooked up uh, to our uh, 
Kunkin uh, KP184, it's a battery discharger. I set it for 10 amps. I didn't set any at the bottom voltage on it. So we're gonna let the BMS uh, shut down this pack. Uh, we're gonna go up until the BMS shuts it off. So let's set it for 10 amps, turn it on. Here we go. Uh, so it should take uh, about uh, 10 hours or so uh, for it to discharge. All right, so uh, we are looking at uh, 10 amps on the discharge side, side uh, 10.1, and then our discharger says uh, 9.999, so 10. So very close to each other. This one a little overestimating it compared to uh, Kunkin. Uh, so anyways, I'll give you an update once uh, this uh, is fully discharged, and we'll, we'll check uh, the uh, cells, individual cells, and all that good stuff, and I'll give you an update. All right, so discharge test is done. Uh, we are at 0%. Uh, uh, this is our uh, cell group voltages. It shut down because of the cell undervolt, so it sensed one of the cell groups get low, and then BMS shut the pack down, and we ended up with a uh, 105.8 amp hours, so 5.8% above the rated capacity. That's, that's that's pretty good. All right, I appreciate you guys watching. I uh, hope this uh, video helps somebody, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.